No two users are alike. Photoshop can be customized to suit a wide variety of needs. Let's find out how. Photoshop has dozens of preferences settings, but fortunately, most of them can be left at their default values. Let's take a look at the ones you should consider changing to make it easier to follow along in upcoming lessons. To get to preferences, we're going to go up to the edit menu, scroll all the way down to the bottom where we see preferences. I'll point out this is on a Windows machine. If you're using a Mac, you're going to find the preferences menu located underneath the Photoshop menu. In preferences, we're going to start with general. Now the very first thing I would like for you to do here is go up to the use shift key for tool switch and turn it off, uncheck it. With this disabled, we're going to be able to move quickly from one tool to the next using keyboard shortcuts without having to invoke the shift key, a huge time saver. While we're here, let's turn off enable flick panning as well. This is an interesting little piece of eye candy, but it's far from essential, and quite frankly, if you've never seen it before, it takes a little bit of getting used to, so we won't use that. Let's go down now to interface. I would like for you to turn off the show tool tips box. What's a tool tip? Well, there you see it. It shows up in yellow and it shows up over menu items and tools, giving you little hints and tips about what they do. But who needs tool tips? You've got me. So let's turn that off. We'll move down to performance. And I just want to verify a couple of things here. Under memory usage, I just want you to make sure that this arrow is not dragged all the way over to the right. Now that Photoshop has 64-bit versions for both the PC and Mac, it is possible to drag it all the way to the right and use up every last ounce of memory on your system. But for our purposes, we really want to be somewhere in the 60 to 70% range. So just verify that you're somewhere along there. Wouldn't go past 70% for our uses. That'll be fine. Down here under GPU settings, we've got an Enable OpenGL Drawing option. Sounds geeky, but feel free to check it. This will give us access to some visual interface enhancements. Now if it's grayed out, that means your video card doesn't support this feature. But don't despair. This functionality is nice, but not crucial. I'll give you a heads up whenever I show features that require an OpenGL compatible video card. Finally, let's go down to cursors. Now, I just want to verify a couple of things. Make sure that under painting cursors, you've got it set to normal brush tip. And then, to the right under Other Cursors, please set it to Standard. With these two settings, we'll guarantee that we are looking at the same thing on my screen and your screen once we start painting and brushing and all that other cool stuff. And that's it. Our preferences are set up and we're ready to move on.